afternoon, New Brunswick, and welcome to today's COVID-19 update for the province. Today, we will be hearing from Premier Higgs, Dr. Russell, and Minister Shepard. I am Vicki Hogarth at the CHCO News Desk. I will be following online as this goes on. Uh, we've done the roll call currently. Um, so it sounds like there could be up to two questions today. There are a lot of journalists, but it could go either way, either one question or potentially two. I'm seeing a lot of people joining us online already. So hello to all of you watching on Facebook. If you are watching at home and you'd like to email in a question, there's an email just below my name on the screen. Uh, if you're watching on television, that is uh, to news at chco.tv. Or you can also email Vicki, V-I-C-K-I dot Hogarth, H-O-G-A-R-T-H at C-H-C-O dot TV. I am hearing a little bit of sound from the conference room, so I'm just going to turn up the volume a little bit um, just so we can be aware of when we go in to the conference room and get started. Uh, in terms of cases in the province, there were 112 new cases of COVID-19 in New Brunswick yesterday, and as many of you know who follow regularly, we do, we've been having uh, three-digit days for quite a while now. Um, there were 19 in Zone 1, 15 in Zone 2, 56 in Zone 3, 5 in Zone 4, 3 in Zone 5, 4 in Zone 6, and 10 in Zone 7. Now, in terms of active cases in the province, there are over 1,000 active cases right now, so this is, is another uh, milestone for New Brunswick at this point. Um, there are 183 active cases in Zone 1, 210 in Zone 2, 437 in Zone 3. That is the zone with the most number of active cases currently. 39 in Zone 4, 16 in Zone 5, 16 in Zone 6, and 118 in Zone 7. So again, Zone 3 is the zone that is currently um, w having the most active number of cases. That being said, there are um, not an extreme number of hospitalizations given the number of active cases. Uh, there definitely are a, quite a large number of people in hospital, but given the active cases, uh, it shows that vaccines are working. There are currently 39 people in the hospital with COVID-19. 14 of those are in ICU, six of which are on a ventilator currently. Uh, in terms of vaccine breakdowns, 82.3% of eligible New Brunswickers. Now remember, this number has gone down recently because we are now including people five and up as eligible. So if you're wondering why the, uh, uh, the percentage has seemed to go down, um, it was once they factored in uh, five and up being eligible. Um, so that was a quite a considerable amount of the population. So now we have 82.3% of eligible having had, uh, being fully vaccinated, 88.4% having had at least one dose. Um, in terms of a booster shot rollout, uh, there are uh, 60, uh, 67,617 people have currently received a booster dose. If you are 50 and older, you can now book your booster appointment. Uh, and we are expecting people in their 40s to be able to book an appointment likely sometime this week that will open up. If not this week, it will be next week. Uh, again, if you're following online, I appreciate hearing uh, what you are concerned about, what your questions are. One of the biggest questions that has come in recently, um, which I'll tell you that I'm considering asking, seeing as we have Premier Higgs in this conference, he's not in all the conferences. So generally, when I have a question that only he can answer, um, I, I like to ask those ones, give those ones priority for the conferences that he is a part of. Now, if you follow Maine's numbers, which many of you who live in border communities like we do, do you follow they had a record breaking day themselves last week with over 2100 new cases in a single day and that's the most they've had this was two weeks after thanksgiving american thanksgiving that is pretty much so there's there's a question there about whether this is a sign of things to come and if you live on campobello island and know that the ferry is ending um, that connects campobello to the mainland the ferry will be ending it's been subsidized by the province during covid to give them a link to mainland New Brunswick throughout the year. This will be ending at the end of December. Now the rationale behind ending the funding for that had to do with America opening its border to Canadians. Campobello Islanders have always been um, allowed to travel through the U.S. but now that it is open uh, to anyone who uses the Arrive Can app and is vaccinated, uh, I believe it's the province's thinking that that should mean it's time to end the subsidized ferry for the winter. Now, given the number of cases now in Maine and the potential that, that we could be having more restrictions at any time ourselves, given um, the number of cases that we are seeing, it's obviously worrying a lot of people. 
Many Campobello Islanders and friends and family of Campobello Islanders are wondering if this ferry should not be once again check subsidized one, two, this year. In, There's Bruce, one. as you can hear. It doesn't mean we're necessarily going into the conference room just yet, but they're testing the mics out. So that's a good sign. We, we will be starting somewhere near on time. It's 3.01 right now. Um, it does sound like we are in the conference room any minute now. But again, I am considering asking about the Campobello Ferry. Uh, if you're watching at home and you have questions to, to submit, please do so on Facebook or, as I said, by email. I try to check both as best I can um, during the conferences. Facebook is the easiest way for me to follow. I have it open on my computer in front of me so I can see the questions that come in. I'm just a little bit of housekeeping. If you do post a link on Facebook, it will be taken down just because we don't have time to check these during the conferences. So whether it is something that is a useful link or not, oftentimes it is not um, and could be misleading, um, we have to, to uh, hide those comments or remove them. So just please don't post links into the Facebook live feed. I'd appreciate that. It uh, just makes, makes it a little easier for us to uh, make sure we're doing this fairly to, for everyone watching at home, regardless of what um, your opinions are on um, different issues. So again, if you do have questions, please feel free to write them. I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces already. Corey in Moncton, hello. I do enjoy your Facebook site. It's Scanner, uh, Moncton Scanner and News, and Corey and I have become friends throughout the course of this pandemic online. One day I will meet you in person for real, Corey, I am sure. Um, I would also like, while we have this moment with you, uh, to thank those of you who watched our telethon yesterday. We had our annual Santa's Helpers Telethon for families in need in Charlotte County. Uh, over the holidays, it helps provide dinners and gifts for children. It was a record-breaking year, and given the times we're living in, it's so nice to be lifted by the spirits of New Brunswickers. It's been hard on everyone, and yet your generosity was... Uh, very visible, very felt yesterday. It was a record-breaking year. It was $75,500 raised in total. I did hear there was potentially even more that came in after the telethon was over, so I'll get an update from the rest of the Santa's Helpers team that takes care of all the donations. But it was amazing. I got to co-host with Andrew Giddens, um, who's the person who's, who's brought Santa's Helpers back for a new generation. It's 51 years it's been going on in Charlotte County. So it was a beautiful... Um, beautiful way to sort of get my holiday season kicked off. I know that these uh, COVID-19 updates can sometimes put a damper on, especially at this point in time with so much COVID fatigue, I know that you are all feeling it. Um, so yesterday it was nice to have our spirits lifted in a totally different way to be reminded of why we love to call New Brunswick home. For me specifically, Charlotte County, uh, it's a really special place and it was amazing to see how many of you called in um, to pledge donations anywhere from $10 to, to thousands. Uh, they all matter and they all counted and it was really wonderful to be a part of and it was a community effort. So thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart. I know what a difference you've made to so many families. Um, as we know from poverty report that came out recently, one in five children in New Brunswick lives in poverty and in Charlotte County where we are, that number can be higher in different areas. So really appreciate my fellow New Brunswickers who rose to the occasion. Uh, if you watched my dog Maud, who is on the floor right now beside me, I'm surprised she hasn't barked uh, because there's some work going on outside our building today. <laughs> so she might get ready for a Maud cameo by accident today. Um, but I do, uh, she was actually co hosting mo <laughs> most of the telethon yesterday. She sat right beside us. So check it out. It's uh, on our Facebook page if you want to see it. I should let you know if you have children that performed, uh, our team at CHCO went around recording all the choirs beforehand um, from different schools across southwest New Brunswick. Um, we will be recutting that for, I believe, this weekend, and it will play throughout the holidays. So Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, things like that. You'll be able to see it on television as well as on our YouTube page. So if you're looking for a second, uh, a second playing of Santa's Helpers, it's coming in a whole recut packaging so you don't have to watch the whole four and a half hour telethon again. So thank you. Um, that said, again, if you're just joining us now, today in today's conference, we will be hearing from Premier Higgs, Dr. Russell, and Minister Shepard. I don't know what the news was, uh, will be today. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of speculation about um, what's happening in Zone 3 with over 400 active cases currently there. Um, there are a lot of schools in New Brunswick currently affected by COVID-19. Uh, uh, many of the cases right now are in people under the age of 19 and a significant number um, in children under nine. And if you look at the COVID-19 dashboard, one thing that is um, 
interesting to go on is if you go on the number of cases by age group, the number of cases in the zero to nine age group currently is really high. Now I didn't want to uh, do, do the math on it because um, I'm always scared to get these things wrong and, and say them at the start of conferences, but it looks like the, uh, the zero to nine age group has grown so much in the last little while in terms of the number of cases there that it could be one of the leading um, age groups in the province for, for the number of cases experienced uh, by an age group. So they're broken down into um, 10 year brackets. So zero to nine, I think because of Delta variant. Uh, last year, as we saw with children, the original strain didn't seem to be as contagious with children. We weren't seeing these outbreaks that we're seeing now in schools. And this year it's a different ball game. Now, obviously with the Omicron variant that we're hearing about, um, not currently yet in New Brunswick, though who knows what the news will be today at the start of today's conference. Uh, obviously these things are a matter of time. They're projecting in the US, it will be the dominant strain in just a matter of months. Um, we haven't had a case here yet, but if I, I'll make sure I can remember which provinces have it. BC, I think it's BC, Alberta, Ontario, Quebec are the provinces that have so far reported uh, Omicron. Correct me if you know of any more. I haven't done a recent Google of where it is in Canada um, at the moment, but feel free to, uh, to jump in on Facebook and, and let me know if you have. Also today, if you're following the Nova Scotia conference right now too, which is supposed to be at the same time as New Brunswick's conference, Nova Scotia was obviously doing very well and there was recently um, an, uh, an uh, outbreak, I guess I could say, at St. Francis Xavier University um, that has caused spread across the province. There are a number of cases in Halifax now. They were in triple digit case count numbers over uh, the weekend for daily cases and it shows you just how fast something like this can, can take hold of somewhere that's doing otherwise well and it's a reminder that the strains that we are dealing with now are extremely different uh, than the original strain in terms of how contagious they are. We're seeing them reach younger people and just spread in places we didn't necessarily see spread like this before. Last year, schools didn't seem to be a place where, where there was community spread. They seemed to just be positive cases that kids got outside of the school um, in family settings if there were cases among younger people. But this year, we're seeing it um, child to child, and it is, it's, it's very sobering. Um, Obviously, it changes what a lot of people were planning to do for the holidays. When we had vaccines come out in the summer, uh, we didn't know, we weren't predicting Omicron, um, but we should, I guess, anticipate for the next long while that um, mutations will just be a factor in, in COVID-19. Now, in terms of vaccines, I know that the booster shot is, Pfizer did a report last week that said, um, that with a third dose that you're you're very protected against omicron um and that they are tweak they can tweak the vaccine booster dose by march to be fully um tailored for omicron um march 2022 so very soon so i guess that will just be the nature of how um the vaccines are adjusted to deal with variants as they pop up but again omicron is just a sign that as a world we have to make sure that we're not just protecting our own. It's a, a variant can develop in a place where there isn't enough vaccine for the people. So really, this is definitely a wake up call for the world to realize you can't just do it country by country. It has to be a, a universal effort to make sure people are safe. It's the only way to protect yourself is to protect everyone. So uh, definitely something that a mutation and a new variant teaches the world that you can't just uh, hoard a vaccine for one country. It has to be something that we think of globally. Uh, in terms of finding a cure to what's going on right now and getting it under control. It definitely can't be um, just one out for themselves. So uh, if you are just joining us now, I can do a breakdown again in terms of our case count for uh, active case counts for the province. There are over a thousand active cases currently. Uh, zone one, 183 active cases. Zone two, 210. Zone three, as I mentioned earlier, but for those of you just joining us, zone three is the health zone with the most number of active cases at 437. There are 39 in zone four, 16 in zone five, 16 in zone six, and 118 in zone seven. Again, if you are following on Facebook, please feel free to put your questions in there. Uh, I've tried to catch up as much as I can. I'm gonna check my email right now to see if there are any questions that have come in there, but I check them 
all the time and as many of you know who follow regularly I put them in cue cards in front of me so that I have them um, I can read you a few more backup questions I have obviously since Premier Higgs is joining us I hope to ask about the Camp of Bello Ferry. A lot of you online are asking about case counts in schools and what that means. There has been a call by some parents to uh, to uh, move to online er learning in places where there are active cases, but it's there's two different arguments there. Um, some saying that staying in school is is better for their children and some choosing to take their kids out of school. I'm sure this will be something that Premier Higgs, Dr. Russell and Minister Shepard address in their talk um, at the start of the COVID-19 update. We'll be hearing from all three before we get to questions. I think I'm about number three on the roll call in terms of questions, question periods. So I will be able to likely ask um, something about the ferry early on. And if we do have a chance for a second question, I'd love to hear what yours are. Otherwise, I have your questions from last week in front of me. Our last conference was Friday, I think. so. So um, definitely on Friday's conference, we were told before Friday's conference not to expect a level change. Now we weren't told this, I'll just double check actually, before, um, let me see if it says anything about the level change. It doesn't today. So Friday, as many of you remember, we posted before the conference that you shouldn't expect a level change on Friday. Um, and that was something we were told in our email from Fredericton um, that not to anticipate this. I think that they must get a lot of emails the same way that we do uh, when they're about to give a conference. Um, so we didn't get that in today's update. So, or I'm not, I'm not saying that necessarily means anything, but uh, it was very much uh, a part of the email that we received Friday before the conference. So. Um, I'm wondering if any of you are watching online, if you've also watched the, the Nova Scotia conference that's on currently right now, um, and if they have introduced any more restrictions um, to deal with the outbreaks that they are currently experiencing. I'd love to, to know what's happening. I'll try to Google it as uh, the conference is starting. Um, but again, other questions that you have written in this week. Now, one that I talked to you about before is, is it possible, this is a question that I've had conversations with many viewers about, that our fourth wave in New Brunswick um, has been so bad just because we had no natural herd immunity before because we had done so well uh, prior to this past summer when we opened up. It's an interesting question to think about um, when you look at a place like Toronto, for example, that had a lot of cases, or Montreal, cities that have a very condensed uh, population um, and had many cases at the start of COVID-19. There is some kind of natural herd immunity that comes from that. Herd immunity is a word I'm sure many of us a couple years ago had never heard before. Um, but because they had so many cases, perhaps they are more protected from that. Uh, it's it's more of a, obviously a question for Dr. Russell uh, to answer, um, but I'm saving that. It's sort of a question that's, that can always be relevant. So depending on um, what is said in today's conference, I will pivot to ask a question based on that. So that's why I appreciate if you're following online or if you want to email while it's happening, um, we can ask a question that you write in on the spot. Um, based on what's said, uh, try to follow everything that's happening. Let me see, I'll read you one that's coming in right now. Um, Ina, or Ina, I don't know how to pronounce your name, I'm sorry, but Ina is wondering if New Brunswick is still, still dealing with the Delta variant or, or Omicron. Now, I can actually answer that for you as we wait. Right now, we are dealing with the Delta variant. That is the dominant uh, strain in New Brunswick. So far, we haven't had Omicron. Uh, I know it is obviously a matter of time. Um, it could be even something that they announced in today's conference. I don't know, but um, at this point in time, we, we don't have any um, Omicron in the province, but we are able to test for it. So I know the laboratory in Moncton is able to, to check for any kind of, uh, if there is a chance that someone has traveled to a country affected by this variant or who has been in contact with someone who has and test positive, then they send those tests for, a tim well, they're already tested um, at the laboratory, but they are then again tested for this particular strain. Now it looks like we are going right into the conference room. So we're just looking for a video feed from the conference. We get a little ahead of time here when we're on the line. Um, that's why you can, so as soon as I get word from the back that they have a video feed, we will go right into the conference and I will see you after. On COVID-19 in New Brunswick. Speaking on behalf of the province today in the following order. 
Dr. Jennifer Russell, the province's Chief Medical Officer of Health, the Honorable Dorothy Shepard, Minister of Health, and the Honorable Blaine Higgs, Premier of New Brunswick. Les porte-parole aujourd'hui dans l'ordre suivant sont la médecin hygiéniste en chef, la Dr. Jennifer Russell, l'Honorable Dorothy Shepard, Ministre de la Santé, et l'Honorable Blaine Higgs, Premier ministre du Nouveau-Brunswick. Dr. Russell. Le Nouveau-Brunswick est entré dans une nouvelle phase de la pandémie de COVID-19. Le laboratoire de l'hôpital du Georges Dumont à Moncton a confirmé que le premier cas du variant Omicron a été relevé dans la province. Il a été confirmé que deux personnes dans la zone 7 soit la région de Mirimichi et qu'une autre dans la zone 1, soit la région de Moncton et du sud-est de la province, ont contracté ce, ce nouveau variant plus transmissible du virus responsable de la COVID-19. Il y a quatre autres cas dans ces zones qui sont directement liés à ces trois premiers cas. Il est donc présumé qu'il s'agit de ces cas, de cas attribuables au variant Omicron. Nous nous attendons avec forte conviction que d'autres cas du genre fassent surface. Ces nouveaux cas sont liés à une récente éclosion à l'Université St. Francis Xavier à Antigonish, en Nouvelle-Écosse. New Brunswick has entered a new phase of the COVID-19 pandemic. Through the Dr. George Dumont Hospital Laboratory in Moncton, we have confirmed the first case of the Omicron variant in our province. Two cases in Zone 7, which is the Miramichi region, and one case in Zone 1, which is Moncton and Southwest New Brunswick, are confirmed to be from this new and more transmissible variant of the COVID-19 virus. There are four other cases in these zones that are directly linked to the first three cases. They are therefore presumed to be Omicron cases. We fully expect to see more. These new cases are linked to the recent outbreak at St. Francis Xavier University in Antigonish, Nova, Nova Scotia. We are working closely with our Nova Scotia colleagues to slow the further spread of this variant through our region. The arrival of the Omicron variant is not unexpected. We have seen a sharp increase in cases in Ontario and Quebec over the past week, with many new cases caused by this variant. Il s'agit d'une tendance alarmante car certains aspects du, du variant Omicron sont toujours inconnus. Il faut absolument prendre d'autres mesures de précaution. Nous devons et nous pouvons protéger la population et notre système de soins de santé. This is concerning because there are traits of Omicron we do not know yet. Further precautions must be taken. We must and we can protect our people and our healthcare system. Thanks to everyone who has become vaccinated and are following public health guidance, we are much better positioned to deal with this variant than other versions of this virus. The introduction of the Omicron variant will require changes in our approach to managing COVID-19, which the Premier will speak to in a few minutes. I want to tell you what we know and what we don't know about the Omicron variant. Scientists around the world and here in Canada are investigating this virus and discovering new information every day. What we do know is that this version of COVID-19 is much more transmissible than previous versions. Les données montrent que ce variant est au moins 30% plus transmissible que la variant Delta, qui est présentement la souche la plus dominante du virus au Nouveau-Brunswick. Evidence shows that this variant is at least 30% more transmissible than the Delta version, which is now the dominant strain in New Brunswick. In South Africa, where this variant was first detected, there has been a sharper rise in cases than in earlier waves of the pandemic. This is consistent what we are beginning to see here in Canada. What we don't fully understand is the severity of the Omicron virus. It is not clear yet if it will lead to stronger or milder cases of infection. 
Cependant, si l'on se fie à ce qui se passe ailleurs au Canada et dans le monde, il remplacera bientôt le variant Delta à titre de variant le plus dominant de la COVID-19. Bien que la vaccination continue d'offrir une couche de protection, il y a été prouvé qu'une dose de rappel est requise pour maximiser son efficacité contre le variant Omicron. Based on what is happening elsewhere in Canada and around the world, it will soon overtake Delta as the dominant variant of COVID-19. And while vaccination continues to, brought, to provide a level of protection, there is evidence that booster shots are required to maximize their effectiveness against Omicron. It appears that those who have had COVID-19 in the past can be reinfected with this variant. We know that a rapid rise in cases of COVID-19, particularly among those with other health issues or who are older and unvaccinated, will result in greater numbers of severe illness that will further strain our healthcare system. With Omicron, it's a numbers game. Cases double approximately every two days. The sheer volume of cases we expect to see in Canada is quite large. Based on our knowledge and based on modeling, it may translate into more hospitalizations, and that is why it is more important than ever that New Brunswickers become fully vaccinated as soon as possible. Given the growing number of cases among young children in our province, it is vital that every parent ensures that their children between 5 and 11 years of age get their first dose of COVID-19 vaccine. As mentioned, booster shots provide a further necessary layer of protection. Two, two doses is good, three doses is better. We need to maximize our protection in every way possible. Every New Brunswicker over the age of 50 is now eligible to receive their booster if they received their second shot any time in June or before, and I encourage every eligible New Brunswicker to do this. I'm grateful that my, both my parents have received their booster shots. Appointments are available through regional health authority clinics and participating pharmacies. Nous renforcerons nos capacités afin de mettre des cliniques sur pied dans les plus brefs délais pour permettre à plus grand nombre de citoyens de recevoir leur dose de rappel le plus rapidement possible. Le Nouveau-Brunswick continue d'enregistrer un nombre élevé de cas au fur et à mesure que cette quatrième vague de cette pandémie se poursuit. Aujourd'hui, Santé publique confirme qu'il y a 100 nouveaux cas de COVID-19 au Nouveau-Brunswick ainsi que 69 rétablissements. J'annonce aussi que deux autres personnes sont décédées après avoir contracté ce virus. We are building capacity for more clinics as quickly as possible so more New Brunswickers can get their boosters as soon as possible. We are continuing to see elevated numbers of cases in New Brunswick as the fourth wave of this pandemic continues. Today, public health has confirmed 100 new cases of COVID-19 in New Brunswick along with 69 recoveries. There have also been two more deaths due to this virus. There are now 1,048 active cases of COVID-19 in our province. There are now 41 patients currently in hospital, of whom 14 are under intensive care. COVID-19 has been with us for almost two years. It is now clear that it will be with us for some time to come. Our goal is to slow the spread of this virus. We need to buy time so we can get boosters into as many people as possible to increase protection for ourselves, our families, our communities, and our healthcare system. I know that we can do this because we've collectively done it before. If we all act responsibly and treat one another with kindness and consideration, I am confident that we can do this again. Knowing that everyone is very, very tired, please look after yourselves and each other. Thank you. Good afternoon, bonjour. As Dr. Russell has just informed us, we now have confirmation that the Omicron variant is present in New Brunswick. This is not a surprising development as the variant has already been detected in many countries around the world and in several provinces in Canada. However, it is certainly concerning to learn that cases have been found in two zones in our province. We know we will need to take additional steps to help slow the spread of the variant and protect all New Brunswickers. 
This fourth wave of the pandemic has not been easy for our province. <clears throat> we have experienced a surge of cases over the past few months, and we have all had to make adjustments as we have learned to live with COVID-19. While we are still learning more about Omicron, we already know that over the past 21 months, the COVID-19 virus has consist consistently managed to find the weakest link. Right now, we need to assure, ensure we do everything in our power to protect our healthcare system and the staff working at our hospitals. We know that our healthcare system is fragile. We are all aware of its challenges and vulnerabilities. Throughout the pandemic, protecting our hospitals has been a key focus. Right now, there are 41 hospitalizations due to COVID-19, with 14 in the ICU. <clears throat> Of those in hospital, five are on ventilator. While the current number of hospitalizations is still manageable, we need to be vigilant, so the situation remains under control. If the number of hospitalizations and ICU admissions does rise significantly, it will have a serious impact on all New Brunswickers. Some of our hospitals have already had the experience of being forced to cut back temporarily on some regular services. This is something we want to avoid as much as possible so people can continue to have appointments and routine surgeries and treatments. Other jurisdictions have experienced a much worse situation in which healthcare professionals have been forced to make heartbreaking decisions about who to care for and who to turn away. This is something we must avoid at all costs in New Brunswick. I realize that our healthcare workers <clears throat> are already feeling a great deal of strain. This fourth wave has been extremely demanding of them. Contact tracers and other public health employees are also experiencing this impact. I want to take a moment to thank all of those dedicated employees for continuing to show up and take care of New Brunswickers, even in the face of incredible hardship. In addition to the measures Premier Higgs will be announcing shortly, we know there are things we can all do to protect ourselves, our healthcare workers, and hospitals. This includes continuing to wear a well-fitted mask indoors and wearing a mask outdoors when physical distancing cannot be maintained. Keep your contacts as low as possible. If you are going out for errands, work, or holiday gatherings, assess your personal risk before leaving and try to keep track of where you are going just in case you need to inform contact tracers. We know that the likelihood of becoming seriously ill from COVID-19 is much lower among the vaccinated. We are still seeing our vaccination numbers rise. As of today, 82.3% of eligible New Brunswickers are fully vaccinated. The vaccine was only made available to children aged 5 to 11 in late November, but 28.1% of that age group has already received their first dose. We also know that booster doses have been shown to be effective in protecting against the Omicron variant. So far, 9.2% of eligible New Brunswickers have received a booster dose. If you do fall into one of the eligible groups for a booster, including those who are 50 and older, I strongly encourage you to book an appointment for your shot if you have not yet done so. I know the holiday season is right around the corner and everyone is anxious about being able to spend time with their loved ones. We have all had another hard year and seeing our family and friends, close friends is very important, especially around this time of year. We can all still experience the joys of the holidays with our loved ones. We just need you to do it safely, keeping in mind all the lessons we have learned over the course of the pandemic. Please continue to take care of one another. I know it isn't always easy, but when each of us does our part, we are protecting not only ourselves and our loved ones, but also our healthcare system, our community, and our whole province. Thank you, merci.
Good afternoon. Bonjour. With cases of the Omicron variant now confirmed in our province, I know that people are concerned, as am I. The holiday season is here, and with more people gathering and socializing, it is vital that we work together to slow the spread of COVID-19 in our province, as we have done before, while still following, finding a balance of living with COVID. La variante Omicron deviendra dominante dans notre province, et nos hôpitaux seront débordés si nous, nous de, se, ne prenons pas collectivement des mesures, et ce, dès maintenant. Because of the threats Omicron poses, addition of Omicron, we are putting several interim measures in place to help slow the spread of COVID-19. This is especially important considering the extra activity the holiday season brings. Nous collaborons de près avec nos collègues qui vivent les mêmes problèmes. Nous allons être aussi uniformes que possible. We are seeing a large number of cases in children who are not yet vaccinated. So the holiday break for children from kindergarten to grade six will begin early. La dernière journée de col pour ces enfants sera ce vendredi. In zone three, we are seeing the majority of cases in children. Rapid test kits will be sent home today with all children in kindergarten to grade eight. In addition, sports and organized activities for all children under the age of 12 are suspended as of tonight at 11.59 p.m. This includes any upcoming scheduled sporting tournaments. Children under 12 are not fully and are not fully vaccinated. And as children under five are not yet eligible for vaccination, we are taking steps to limit exposures in those age groups. These steps will help us to slow the transmission as we continue with our booster doses and pediatric vaccinations, and will limit the number of children in a cluster when exposures occur. Also, as of tonight at 11.59 p.m., for those 12 and older, sporting competitions and games, including upcoming tournaments, are suspended, but practices and skill drills are permitted if they only involve one team at a time and the organization has an operational plan that includes distancing and sanitization. Beginning this Friday at 11.59 p.m., there will be some additional changes to businesses. Entertainment centers, including movie theaters, professional sporting events, casinos will be operating at 50% capacity with distancing of two meters. Patrons are permitted to dine in at restaurants, but physical distance of two meters must be maintained between tables and proof of vaccination remains required. For businesses and retail spas, salons and gyms, they must ensure two meters of distancing is maintained at all times. Businesses and organizations must take steps to ensure that they do not admit more people that can be safely allowed to maintain two, excuse me, two meter physical distancing. And inside their business, take steps like signage, directional arrows, and lines to help keep people two meters apart. And depending how things change in our province in the coming days and weeks, we may require further restrictions. We know that we're coming into a busy, busy season. And it's really important that we refocus on the efforts that we've become so accustomed to over the past two years. We cannot let our guard down now. And in order to avoid further restrictions that could potentially impact our holiday season, we need to stay very focused and just manage ourselves accordingly. Je sais que cela sera difficile pour certaines entreprises, car c'est le temps de l'année le plus occupé. We are working with the federal government and will work with you on ways to protect you and to minimize the impact, as we know that this does have an impact on businesses. But as I said earlier, we're trying to minimize that, but we'll follow the events of the next few days to see where we need to go. We know that with this holiday season approaching, many New, Brunswick, New Brunswickers have made plans to visit friends and family. To balance the need to slow transmission, with a desire to see friends and family at this time, 20 person gathering limit is being placed with the familiar steady 20 theme. Your steady 20 is 20 consistent people from outside your household that your family interacts with. Votre manage peut fréquenter les membres 20 personnes. On parle ici de 20 contacts 
par manage. Par ma membre de la famille. These changes will allow New Brunswickers to spend time with family and friends over their holidays while slowing the spread of COVID-19, support contact tracing efforts, and buy us some time to get more children protected and roll out booster shots to more people as they have shown significant effectiveness elsewhere in the world against Omicron. The last 21 months have been filled with challenges, and with the confirmation of the Omicron variant in our province, we now face a new challenge. Je suis procédé que nous pouvons faire face à ces défis, comme nous l'avons fait par le passé. These measures are aimed at slowing the spread of COVID-19, but we have worked to find measures that allow us to balance the importance of physical, mental, and financial well-being with reducing transmission. With what we know about Omicron, we cannot stand by and not take action. And should the situation change, we may have to move beyond these interim measures and into level two of the winter plan. We take the steps needed when they are needed to ensure our healthcare system does not become overwhelmed. We, nous avons vivre avec le COVID-19, mais en gardant toujours en tête qu'il faut protéger les gens de New Brunswick qui sont vulnérables. Nos enfants et notre système de soins de santé. Thank you. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Premier ministre, Madame la Ministre et Dr. Russell. Thank you, Premier, Minister, and Dr. Russell. We'll now proceed with questions from members of the media. You have the right to pose your questions in the official language of your choice. Each reporter will have one question and a quick follow-up. Nous allons maintenant procéder aux questions des membres des journalistes. Vous avez toujours le droit de poser vos questions dans la langue officielle de votre choix. Chaque journaliste aura une question et un suivi. We'll now start with Laura Brown of CTV. Hi there. <clears throat> I'm wondering if any of the uh, Omicron uh, variant cases are being treated in hospital at this time. I don't have exact details on uh, what the status of the um, newly diagnosed cases are. Um, so we'll keep you posted on that. Ms. Brown, do you have a follow up? Yes, I'm also wondering, this sounds like it's not level two of the winter plan and it's not level one of the winter plan. Is it, would you consider it, I guess, level one and a half or, or it doesn't really fit into either category from what I, I can see? Um, you are correct, Laura. I guess the, the triggers that we were watching closely for level one, and level two, um, were based on, you know, what we'd seen for changes. And, and as you read in the outline, what it triggered was an evaluation by public health of our situation. Now, obviously, our cases have been, although they've been rising, um, we're maintaining a pretty steady level in the hospitalizations. But the Omicron presence has brought a new element of concern and, and how that may rapid spread. So what we've done really here is say, okay, well, let's, let's look at the schools, the area of transmission, because 50 or 60 percent of our cases are, are involved in the age groups that we're, we're uh, let's say locking down at this point. Um, we know that this is a, a situation where large gatherings, so we've got controls on that um, with, with the changes in the, in the capacity. And we're trying to maintain an element of what people are enjoying getting back together with family and friends. And, and you know, to be very frank, um, it, it's, it's having people accept the reality and not turn, in, turn it into a complete denial. Um, we are relying on everyone to be part of the solution. And Omicron variants in this has, um, has created a whole new element of, of concern. So we're going to try to manage it in increments, but we very well in the next few days could go to a full level two uh, or beyond. Uh, we were putting in these or orders uh, for businesses to take effect as of Friday, but we could be back here on Wednesday talking about a full level two. So we are bridging right now. Uh, to a timeline that we set for Friday, but um, it could get stronger and it could become, um, you know, further 
restrictions. But if we can see a really good response from everyone who's, I know, more focused on Christmas and, and, and the holiday season than, than maybe they are on, on uh, COVID because they've been vaccinated and they feel like, you know, I, I've done my part. Well, right now we're focused on boosters and we're focused on everyone getting that third dose and doing that 50 plus, just getting it booked, getting it done. And I'm hopeful that we'll be able to manage this. Hospitalizations remain to be key and we won't lose, try, lose sight of our ability to deal with that. So um, we may have to go further and we may have to do it quickly because every day is, is a new day with COVID and uh, it's a changing environment, unfortunately. Thank you. Thank you. On va maintenant procéder avec M. Pascal Rachnog avec Radio-Canada. Bonjour, ma question est pour la médecin hygiéniste en chef. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous expliquer en français qu'est-ce qui se passe pour les écoles? Est-ce que c'est seulement pour la zone 3? Est-ce que c'est pour toute la province? Je ne sais pas si vous pouvez me résumer en français les décisions qui touchent l'ouverture et la fermeture des écoles, s'il vous plaît. Alors, les annonces qu'on fait pour les écoles, c'est pour toute la province, euh, au sujet des de sports et les changements euh, pour les enfants et les étudiants à ce moment-ci, et aussi pour tous les, euh, euh, les tests rapides qu'on donne à les étudiants aussi pour euh, amener à la maison. Ça, c'est tout pour toute la province aussi. Ça va? M. Rachna, as-tu un suivi? Oui, je me demande juste, pouvez-vous nous expliquer qu'est-ce qui a poussé euh, la mesure, donc la fermeture des, euh, des écoles de maternelle à sixième année à compter de ben, vendredi? Qu'est-ce qui a motivé cette décision-là? On, on est vraiment conscient qu'avec le nouveau variant Omicron, euh, que la transmission est, est vraiment élevée. C'est plus transmissible du variant Delta. Alors, pour protéger ceux qui ne sont pas vaccinés encore, ils ont, ils sont pas, ils, 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 ça, ça va donner plus de temps pour avancer nos, euh, euh, dans ce euh, euh, programme d'immunisation à ce moment-ci. Et, euh, et c'est vraiment quelque chose avec toutes les nouvelles qu'on a avec euh, le variant Omicron. C'est vraiment, euh, vraiment lié avec ça. Merci beaucoup. We'll now go to Vicky Hogarth with CHCO-TV. Thank you, Bruce. Premier Higgs, Maine reported a record-breaking day of over 2,100 new cases last week, and that was just two weeks after American Thanksgiving, which could be an indication of what's to come after the Christmas holidays. So with Maine's case numbers in mind, coupled with the arrival of Omicron, um, would you consider extending the Campobello Ferry beyond December if things do start to get worse? Yes, we would. Um, we said all along that until things got back to normal, um, we would continue the ferry operation. And so we'll be watching that very closely about activity and their ability to move through Maine as they, as they always have uh, pre-COVID. And um, so, yeah, short answers, uh, we would certainly consider that. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Ms. Hogarth. Do you have a follow-up today? I do. It's for Dr. Russell. Uh, Dr. Russell, how long is it projected until Omicron becomes the dominant variant in Canada? And how effective is the vaccine against it? Hi, Vicki. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time on the weekend uh, conferring with my colleagues across the country and Public Health Agency of Canada on, that, on those very points. Um, what is clear uh, based on the preliminary data that we have is that uh, that third dose is really important in terms of the protection against the Omicron variant um, compared to the Delta. So, so that's why we're pushing right now to have as many people um, uh, getting their third shot as quickly as possible and trying to get the uh, school-age children vaccinated as well, the kids under 12. Um, and in terms of replacing the Delta as the primary circulating variant of COVID-19, the doubling time is every two days, roughly. So we do expect to see the replacement of Delta very, very quickly. Um, in places like Ontario, they are predicting that that will happen by, by Christmas. Thank you both. Uh, we'll now go to Natalie Sturgeon with Global TV. Uh, thanks, Bruce. My question is for um, Dr. Russell. Um, I know it sort of happened quite quickly, but is there any modeling um, that you guys have been able to do in terms of how, how quickly with the doubling um, time, how quickly this is going to spread? 
Well, as you know, Nova Scotia was making announcements today, again, based on the outbreak um, that um, uh, originated from the St. FX um, celebrations and ceremonies. So based on, uh, again, the origin of those Omicron cases right now, um, and based on the fact that we know that the doubling time is, is roughly every two days, we do know that people become um, infected quite quickly within two and a half days and become symptomatic quite quickly. Uh, so at this point in time, again, we do expect that we're going to have second, third, fourth generation transmission in the next um, four to eight days. Ms. Sturgeon, do you have a follow-up? Uh, yeah, my follow-up is, is, is for Premier. Um, I'm just wondering how worried you are given the close proximity to Christmas about people sort of sort of taking matters into their own hands and continuing to do gatherings regardless of, of what restrictions may be in place. I'm very concerned about that. Um, that's why, you know, going to the uh, 20, kind of the steady 20 and, and to that format, it's consistent with what would probably work for most families. And uh, basically, it, it hopefully it's realistic and, and we can manage that uh, collectively. But uh, unless the public decide to be part of this, um, you know, we will not be successful. The, um, the key factors here in relation to certainly the, the following the, the normal public health rules and that what we're used to and distancing and, and masking and, and hand washing, um, it, it's basically the boosters and it's getting, getting those booster shots as quickly as possible. We are in a race here like we were before uh, in terms of people getting vaccinated when they first came, uh, came along the vaccinations. Well, now we're in one to get the third dose out and have people ensure that they continue to be protected. So along with just doing what makes sense, and this, you know, it is just sense, a common sense in many ways. I know it's frustrating. I am very concerned about the Christmas period and people gathering in, in, in larger numbers than they should. But I just encourage everyone to just continue to stay focused. Let's not let this turn into what we've seen in, in, the, in the hospitals become overrun. I've been so impressed with, with our hospitalization levels and the ability for us to manage it within our own system. Even though we've had high case counts, our hospitalizations have been stable. And that's a testament certainly to the people working in our system and people protecting themselves uh, as much as, as, uh, as they could have maybe before. But we have to really uh, just uh, do even more through this next, uh, next several weeks and months as Omicron passes through. Thank you both. On va maintenant procéder avec M. Jean-François Boisvert avec l'Acadie Nouvelle. Oui, bonjour. Ma question, euh, j'imagine que ce serait peut-être plus pour euh, le premier ministre. Euh, ah, là, présentement, euh, on va renvoyer bientôt euh, des élèves à la maison euh, un petit peu plus tôt euh, pour le congé des fêtes. Ils euh, y y y ont beaucoup euh, manqué d'école déjà, ces jeunes-là, euh, dans certaines régions encore plus que d'autres. Est-ce qu'on a pensé à, à y aller avec peut-être... Euh, de l'école à la maison, euh, de, de l'école à distance euh, cette fois-ci, ou est-ce qu'on a complètement rayé cette option-là dès le départ? Well, certainly it may become an option after the, the Christmas break, but, but really if we, we're ending this, uh, send the school kids home at the end of this week, and that's really only probably three days of school time because they were scheduled to end next week anyway, which probably that it would be more like Wednesday or so. Uh, but ideally, it won't be a big, a big loss of, of a full week, uh, given it's the Christmas break period. And the following two weeks were scheduled um, holidays in any case. So in this particular scenario, we're allowing a three-week window to basically give kids, uh, you know, to stop the transmission, uh, to be out of the system um, and, and be directly contacting uh, so many, changing the sporting events, so again, limiting transmission, because 50 to 60 percent of our cases are directly related uh, to this activity within schools. It also gives time for, for us to get caught up in the, in the vaccination levels for this age group. And although we're doing well in this next three weeks, we should be able to do, uh, I, I guess, a whole lot better. So when they return, we would be in better shape on the vaccination levels. Monsieur Boisvert, as-tu un suivi cet après-midi? J'aurais un suivi, peut-être pour la, la doctoration cette fois, par contre, ça serait plus de, de savoir au, au niveau euh, de la vaccination, on parlait que les, est, on est rendu avec le, le booster pour les 50 et plus. Est-ce qu'on doit s'attendre à ce que 
d'autres catégories d'âge bientôt, les 40, les 30, ou pourquoi ne pas mettre, euh, est-ce que c'est une question de, de disponibilité du vaccin, de ne pas mettre le booster à, disponible pour tous? Perhaps I can help with that. We certainly have every intention of increasing our, our opportunity for, uh, for booster shots as soon as possible. Right now, it is about capacity. And so we are engaging with many different professions who have the ability to inject doses. Um, to line those up because we would like to see an expansion of another 50,000 spaces um, between now and the end of the year. But it will, it will, it will, we are determining now if we can make that happen um, in a relevant timeline, but we will most definitely be increasing capacity for the early, early, early new year uh, to ensure that we get as many boosters in arms as soon as possible. That concludes today's COVID-19 update for New Brunswick. Obviously, a lot of information was shared today. Uh, the gist of it being, and I will, will share all the details on our Facebook page once I have them from the government. I just refreshed my email. I don't have them yet. 100 new cases today, but the real news was that there were three confirmed cases of the Omicron variant in New Brunswick. These stem from the outbreak that is at St. Francis, St. Francis Xavier uh, University in Nova Scotia um, and there are suspected to be more cases of close contacts tied to those three cases. Obviously uh, uh, contact tracing is well underway. Kids uh, grade K to 6 will end school early for the holidays at the end of this week and for the rest of us there will be a steady 20 put in place. Now we did have a limit of 20 to indoor household gatherings, 15 to outdoor as a level one precaution um, up until now, but they're reinstituting this steady 20, which means your household plus 20 close contacts. Um, and they think this is a reasonable way to get through the holidays. Now, Premier Higgs did mention that this could change depending on what we learn about cases in New Brunswick this week and as well as the spread of the variant. Um, and I know there's a lot of COVID fatigue I'm following online and I appreciate everything and all the concerns that you do raise, but you have to understand that a new variant, they are able to develop in countries. Obviously this came from countries where they weren't as vaccinated as, as our country is. And a lot of that has to do with many countries just in some ways hoarding supply, right? If we aren't sharing this, these vaccines equally around the world uh, in some countries, then mutations are able to develop when the virus is able to spread. Through, widely through a population and then that can reinfect the rest of the world, even the vaccinated population. As you heard Dr. Russell mention, the Omicron variant, um, you can be, re if you've already had COVID-19, it doesn't give you herd immunity. So she's also recommending a third dose um, of the vaccine, the booster dose, um, as better protection for Omicron. So we are in a, a troubling state. There is a lot of COVID fatigue out there, but you have to understand that like what was put in place a year ago, we have new variants and they're different now and everyone's trying to navigate this at the same time. I appreciate you watching with us. I appreciate the conversation online though. I really do. Um, and I love following along with you, Campobello. I hope I was able to help somewhat with my question about the ferry. Premier Higgs did say that if things do, if it does seem necessary to extend the ferry, uh, what his level of his definition of necessary is, we will find out in the days ahead. Um, he will extend the ferry, even though it is scheduled to end at the end of December. Uh, so I will keep you posted on that. And again, I will post all the details of what all these new regulations are. There was also some new news shared about school sports and sports in general and, and what the regulations are. I'll post them all on Facebook as soon as I have them. Uh, and please feel free to reach out to me at news at chco.tv or, or via a Facebook comment or in a message. Um, I love to hear what you're thinking. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Vicki Hogarth at the CHCO News Desk. I will see you next time. A news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.